Well, good evening and God bless you. We hope to provide some motivation for your midweek. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We're so glad that you decided to stop in and join with us as we worship God tonight. We've got a powerful, powerful teaching in store for you tonight. But before we move any further, I just want to let you know how you can give cheerfully and support this ministry. We have several ways in which you can give. You can give by using our cash app. That's dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. You may also visit our website at R-O-L-W Muskegon.com. There you can use PayPal or your debit or credit card. You may also mail your gift by making a check or money order payable to R-O-L-W-M-I and mail that to 1550 East Laketon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, 49442. Lastly, you can use our text to give platform. So text the word give and include a dollar amount to text number 231-221-2160. That number again is 231-221-2160. Two one six zero. Just text the word give and a dollar amount. Saints, thank you. God bless you. You know, right now we're getting ready to partner with our worship team. And we just ex we invite you to just stand. You know, move your furniture out of the way. Just get loose. Get ready to get free in God as our worship team leads us before the father. And then right after that, we're going to bring a powerful lesson to you tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want you right where you are to just begin to lift up your hands and begin to magnify the Lord right where you are because the Bible, it begins to tell how in Revelation 4, it says, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Come on. He is the one which was and is and is to come. Come on. I want you right where you are to just begin to declare the holiness of our God because he is a worthy God. It said that they had eyes within and without. I want you to know that sometimes our eyes is to see the holiness of God. <laughs> It's for us to set our eyes on him and his beauty. Hallelujah. Come on. You are God and God alone. You are king who sits on the throne. You are God and God alone. And God alone. Come on and tell them who is. You 
which was because when you look back over your life when I look back over my life <laughs> he was the one who was holy then he was faithful then he was righteous then oh God and then we say is I'm talking about my presence I'm talking about your presence you better know that he is the one right now in the middle of your situation he's still a holy God he's still a faithful God he's still a righteous God and then when I look to my future because he is the one that goes before me his holiness has already gone before me his righteousness has already gone before you his faithfulness is already gone before you come on and tell him one more time the one which was and is and is to come the one which was and is and is to come he is the one which was and is and is to come the one which was and is and is to come gather around your throne we set our eyes on you alone. I'm basking in your glory. For you are God Almighty. Hallelujah. We gather around your throne. We set our eyes on you alone. Yeah, yeah. I'm basking in your glory. For you are God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, saints of the most high God, hallelujah. Have you gathered around his throne on tonight? We come to gather around the throne of the most high to lift our voices in holy adoration unto the one who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, because he is a faithful God. Hallelujah, he's holy, hallelujah, he's righteous, hallelujah. Come on in, right where you are, just begin to lift up a praise in your home, wherever you are, wherever you you are watching from hallelujah come on and begin to open up your mouth and give him glory jesus the one who was and is and is to come hallelujah the one that was faithful then hallelujah 
the one that is faithful right now in the midst of everything that you may be going through and the one who is faithful even in your future hallelujah the one that is righteous hallelujah the one that is worthy is he worthy on tonight is there anybody that you would just lift your hands right where you are and give him some glory and say you're worthy god hallelujah you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy hallelujah as you can see, I am stirred by just the awesomeness of our God. Hallelujah. His presence. Hallelujah. If you, are, if you were here, you would be able to just feel his presence, sense his presence. And I pray that right where you are, you two in your homes, you're sensing his presence. You are aware of his presence. Even upon this morning when I got up, I began to sing a song and said that he never leaves me. He never forsakes me. Hallelujah. He's with me to the end does anybody know that our God oh glory be your name he is with us to the end he's not gone anywhere I don't care what it looks like what it feels like sometimes you just gotta tell your mind to shut up tell your emotions to shut up tell your appetite your will your plans to shut up and say my God is right here with me and he is for me and so you can give him glory on tonight Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So Rebe Sikataya, the one who was and is and is to come. And so, Father, we we wait, we await your, your return, Father. We await your return. And we want to be the ones that are ready, God. And so even on tonight, I just lift up who you are unto us, Father God, rivers as a whole and all those that may be watching. And we say thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory, Lord God. We understand that we don't have to beg. We don't have to plead. You have given us many instructions in your word that tells us how to access your presence. And I just believe that as we have opened up our mouths, as we have engaged you on tonight, Lord God, that we have accessed you in a place and in in a way that we maybe had not been able to access you all day long. And so we thank you. I thank you for your presence on tonight. I thank you that you are with me. I thank you that it is you that speak and not me. I decrease on tonight that you may increase. I thank you for the tongue of the learned God. I thank you for the prophetic anointing and spirit. Uh, Father God, oh, lemma surebekaya, that you have given in place unto me to be able to flow by inspiration, Lord God what you will and what you want to say, Lord God. Oh, God, because they didn't tune in on tonight to hear me, but they want to hear you. So I pray that every ear be open, Father God, to receive and every heart be pliable and that it is good ground that even as I sow this word as a seed, that it will go down into the depths of every heart and it will bring forth a mighty, wondrous, awesome harvest, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I am just excited, people of God, on tonight just to be in your presence. Hallelujah. To go before you, I give honor unto our apostle, Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena, the overseers of, um, of this house. I thank them for this opportunity. And so for all of you that have tuned in, I'm glad that you tuned in on tonight. Come on and strap, on, strap up and get ready um, for a word on tonight. And, and in the words of Prophetess Selena, Mama Selena, I love the prophetic. And so this message came forth. I woke up about a week or so ago and I heard the words, the power of praise. But on tonight, we're going to talk about not just any praise. We're going to talk about the power of kingdom praise. And so I text her and I begin to say some things. And I said, this is what I heard this morning. And then when she responded back to me, she said she just had to smile. And in her words, I love the prophetic. Hallelujah. To be with one accord, to be in unity is something to be said because God I commands the blessing when we come together with one accord. And so I knew that when I got it and, and I synced the schedule and I was ministering on tonight, that I was supposed to release this word. And then um, she was already creating a prayer strategy uh, talking about the preeminence, the authority, dominion of praise. I am located in praise and we're going to have some praise encounters. Glory be your name. And so I will be pulling probably a little bit from the prayer strategy, but then I'm also going to be releasing some things that God um, just put upon my heart to share with you. And so even in doing so, 
Um, I'm going to be moving quickly. I'm going to be giving a lot of scriptures on tonight. And so I hope you got your uh, notebook and your pen and, and, and some paper or whatever so that you can take these scriptures down. I may not read all of them or I may not give you time to get to them because the clock is yet winding down. But I want to make sure we get through this. Amen. We're going to talk about the power of kingdom praise. And so we're going to hit a few areas. We're going to talk about why we praise. And this is a question that uh, Providence has been asking this is why I praise. And she said, what is your this? And so I want you to think about that. And even though I'm going to give you some reasons why we praise, I want you um, within yourself as we're as I'm ministering on, night, on tonight, search your heart. Begin to think about it. She's already asked us to begin to think about it. I have some reasons why I praise him. Uh, uh, and I hope that you do too. Amen. We're going to talk about what praise does and its benefits. And then we're going to talk about some expressions of praise. Hallelujah. So I want you to go to me. Our foundational scripture is Genesis 29. And we're going to start around verse 31. And for all of you, you all know this story, so I'm not going to give too much of a backdrop. I'm just going to start with this reading. This is the story of Jacob um, and his two wives and then uh, two maid servants, but it's talking about the children they had. When I begin to look at the first mention of the word praise, and this is where I found it. Amen. Genesis 29, uh, verses 31 to uh, 35. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she, she said, surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Verse 33, and she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord have heard that I was hated, he have therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. She had had three sons now. Therefore was his name called Levi. Verse number 35. This is our key scripture on tonight. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, listen to what she said. When I read this, I about jumped up and ran. She said, now, hallelujah, somebody in your home shout now. Will I praise the Lord? Come on, glory be your name now. We're not talking about later. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about next year. But some of us, we just need to stop right what we're doing. Come on, glory be your name now. Hey, I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, she called his name Judah, which means praise and left bearing. Um, Genesis, when we look at that word Judah, it translates into praise. It is the Hebrew key um, H3063, Yehuda, praise, celebrated. And then it also was the territory occupied. Come on, it was the territory. See, praise can occupy territory by the tribe of Judah. And when I began to look at this, I thought that this was so powerful because prior to Judah, Leah had named all of her children out of her place of pain. Come on. She had named all of her children out of her place of pain. But this time, come on, somebody say this time, she made a conscious decision to stop focusing on her pain Come on, glory be your name, and replace it with praise. See, somebody, you got to come to a place where you replace your pain with the praise. Sometimes we want to stay stuck in the pain. What happened? Come on, we know that last year was bad, and we already done got into this third month. Come on, we came out of 2020, and we're in 2021. But for some of us, we brought whatever baggage that was in 2021 with us. But I'm telling you on tonight, now is your time to praise the Lord. Now is your time to replace that, that pain with a praise. Come on, shout hallelujah. See, because you were never supposed to stay stuck in your pain, but the pain was meant to push you into a praise. Come on, for so some of us, 
some of the things that we went through, it was there to push us into a place of praise. All that Leah had went through, it pushed her into a place of praise. And this is what we're going to decree. Now is the time because we've been talking about set times. This is the time. This is the kingdom era. Hallelujah. This is the set time oh God, of God's favor. But come on, I decree on tonight. Now is the time to replace your pain with praise and shout that now I will praise the Lord hallelujah and because we do this this tells God that we have made a conscious decision that that he come on he is greater than anything that has brought us pain that has brought our family pain that has brought our loved one pain or any of the people that we know that has brought our pain he is greater now I will praise the Lord and then we're going to look at this word praise just in case you you may kind of know what it is but don't know what it is um, I got these definitions out of the Webster's 1828 praise commendation bestowed on a person for his personal virtues or worthy actions all meritorious actions themselves on or, or on anything valuable come on we put a i think about tashka she said put a praise on it come on we put our praise on that which we believe is valuable come on glory be your name approbation expressed in words or songs the expression of approval admiration commendation laudation and then it's also an expression of gratitude for personal favors uh, that has been conferred on to us. It also means to glorify or to extol someone of importance. Amen. How many know that God is important? Hallelujah. God is important. And so we ought to be glorifying him. We ought to be extolling him. We ought to be exalting him. We ought to be lifting him up and magnifying him. The word of the Lord says, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. See, sometimes you just got to break out into a praise. Hallelujah. Glory be your name. Because this is why I praise. Number one, this is so good to me. I praise. I hope you praise. Number one, the foremost reason that we should praise is because our God is praiseworthy. Do you know that he is praiseworthy? He is worthy of your praise. He is worthy of you to open up your mouth and say something good about him. Come on, I'll just take a few seconds. Just take 10 seconds right where you are and begin to just open up your mouth and fill your house and just say something good to daddy. Come on, because he's worthy of the glory, because he's worthy of the, oh, glory be your name, Jesus. He is praiseworthy. And then there is a word. It is pratium. It is a Latin word. It says praise. It translates into price. It translates into prize. It translates into value, meaning to set a great price on. And this means that God, our God, your God, my God, he's deserving of praise because of his high value. How many know that if you have God in your life and the power of the Holy Ghost, that is the most valuable thing that you can have. Sometimes we want to possess uh, natural things. We want houses. We want cars. We want fat bank accounts. But I'm telling you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got Jesus, hey, <laughs> that make me shout right there. I remember the old people, the older saints used to say that if you got King Jesus, hallelujah, you got the most valuable thing. You got everything you need. Come on, everything you need is in King Jesus because he is everything. Hallelujah. He is deserving of praise because of his high value and the high price. Come on. And because of the high price he paid for us, nobody else could pay the price for your debt. Nobody else could pay the price for my sin. Hallelujah. When I was dead and sinking in my sin, it was only but the blood of Jesus. Come on. If he never did another thing else because he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light, I owe him a praise. You owe him a praise come on and lift your voice hallelujah oh glory be your name he paid the price for us and this is that he is our prize 
Come on, do you know that he is the prize? He is the reward. Sometimes I know there's some other rewards that we're going to get in the earth and on the other side. But right now, I want you to know he is the prize. Hallelujah. Some of us, we're still waiting around, looking around for a prize, for something to drop down out of heaven. Come on, you already got him. Come on, you got Jesus. You got the Holy Ghost. Come on, he is the prize. He's the most valuable thing that we have. Oh, God, glory be your name. Number two, this is why I praise. This is why we praise and why you should praise. It is a commandment. Psalms 150, verse number six. And I encourage you to go back and read these scriptures and read the whole chapters. It says, let, come on, let is a form of a command. Come on, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And so can I just tell you that could it be that COVID tried to come and steal some people's breath? He came with some respiratory issues. Why? Because he know that everything that have breath is supposed to praise the Lord. He wanted to make us short of breath and I can't hardly breathe. But the devil is a liar. COVID is a liar. I still got breath left in my body and I will praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. We should be using our breath to release a fragrance. How many know when we praise God, it releases a fragrance into the nostrils of our God, to the very one that breathed life into our very souls. Hallelujah. Number three, it's a good thing to praise God. Come on. It is a good thing to praise our God. Psalms 92 and 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Come on, let me tell you something. We should find pleasure in giving God the glory that is due unto his name. Nobody should have to beg you. Nobody should have to plead with you. Nobody should have to prompt you and prime you. Come on, you should find pleasure in praising your God. And praising the one who breathed breath, it says, it's your breath in my lungs. I pour out my praise to you only. Huh? The only reason why we're still here, the only reason why you're still here is because of him. Hallelujah. Man didn't do it. Man didn't save you. If you're still here, you're here because of God. And you should find pleasure in giving him the glory. Number four. It is pleasing unto the Lord. Come on, when we praise him, it's pleasing. Malachi 3 and 4, it says, Then shall the offering of Judah praise, and Jerusalem, the place of prayer, be pleasant unto the Lord, uh, as in the days of old and as in the former years. Do you know that in the days of old and in the former days, uh, they offered God praises 24-7? Do you know that right now uh, in the heavenlies, uh, there is a 24-7 worship service going on? Why? Because it pleases our God. Oh, glory be your name. It pleases God when we voluntarily give him praise. It said the offering. Come on. It should be voluntarily, not involuntary. See, there were two, there were different types of offerings. If you read the Old Testament, some offerings was willingly and voluntarily, but there were some offerings you didn't have a choice. But see, I believe that we're in a day, in an hour, that God is not going to make you praise him. You got to praise him because you know he's good. You got to praise him because you know he's awesome. He don't want no forced praise. Hallelujah. He don't want your forced praise. He don't want your praise because you scared and you don't know what's going to happen. He wants some true, authentic praise that comes from your heart because you know who he is and you know his worth and his value. Come on, number five. It gives us, this is why we praise. It gives us access to God's presence. Psalms 104. Come on, somebody shout, enter. Hallelujah. I'm going into the presence of our God. I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And I'm going to enter into his course with praise. I'm going to be thankful unto him and bless his holy name, Jesus. Why? Because thanksgiving and praise gives, gives insight into the posture of our hearts. Are we only coming to get something or do we come before him to give something? Come on, if you know, if you can enter in. See, sometimes we enter in, we try to access God's presence the wrong way. We come with our long laundry list of what we need and how we need it done and fix this, do that. I can't believe this and why come this? All this stuff we 
come to God with, but do you ever some days uh, just enter in with thanksgiving and praise? Uh, oh, God, because of your heart posture is, God, I'm not coming today to get something, but I'm coming to give something. I come to pour out uh, on the feet of Jesus this morning or tonight in the noonday, whenever you go before his presence. I come to give of my heart. Hallelujah. Number six, we create a habitation for him, his presence to dwell in. And I was reading a post that Sister Marla posted in our women's, on our women's page, and she called it a house of praise. Come on. We say, Lord, make me a house of prayer. But somebody begin to make this your prayer. God, make me a house of praise uh, that you can dwell in. Uh, I want to be your habitation. Uh, I want to be your dwelling place. Hallelujah. Oh, will you be a house of praise? Psalms 22 and 3. But thou art holy, you that inhabit the praises of Israel. Oh, God, when we, when we make that habitation, this is what happens. As a result, we become more sensitive to his presence. How you, you had those dry seasons, sometimes you just don't feel the presence of God or you can't sense him. Come on, I, I dare you just to begin to have a whole praise party. Don't ask for nothing. Don't get in your feelings in your mind. Just start praising him. Just begin to decree and declare his word. Come on and just tell him who he is to you. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, you will become more sensitive to his presence. We experience the joy found in his presence because the Bible says that in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So if you ain't got no joy, what should you be doing? You should be praising our God that he would inhabit your praises uh, and that's how good he is uh, that when he comes, uh, he'll give you what you need. He'll give you the joy that you've been seeking. Hallelujah. Why? Because he is joy. We experience the refreshing that comes from his presence. It said that the refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. If you dry, you, uh, you don't feel like you, you ain't been refreshed, come on, get into the presence of the Lord. Come on, begin to open up your mouth and begin to praise him. Come on, let the rivers of praise flow freely out of your heart and out of your mouth. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on. Oh, Jesus. See, we want all other things to refresh us, but it, the Bible is clear. Refreshing comes from the presence of our God. Number seven, it is the will of God. Come on, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. And I want to read this because I thought that this was so good. Um. And if you go back and read this whole chapter, man, it so speaks to where we are now. The body, the people, every, it speaks to where we are now. And this was the instructions that he gave to him. And not only am I going to read 18, let's start at 16. 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, verse 16. He said, rejoice evermore. Come on. <laughs> See, a lot of stuff has happened that don't want us to rejoice. The devil don't want us to rejoice. Come on, COVID don't want you rejoicing. Whatever you've been through don't want you rejoicing. But the writer says rejoice evermore. And then he says, and pray without ceasing. Come on. And then he said this in verse 18, in everything, not some things, not most things. Come on. Not some things or most things or a little bit. He said in everything. And every in my book means every. Hallelujah. All things. Give thanks unto God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Come on. In Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, the will of God for you is to give thanks in everything. That means you got to begin to get skilled. And you got to find a way to become grateful for every single thing that have happened to you. I'm talking about from your childhood on up to now. Every bad thing. Come on. If you now in Christ, you better find a way to be grateful. Hallelujah. And give him thanks for it. Even the things that hurt you. It don't say just the things that's good. It say in all things, in everything, give him thanks because it is the will of God. Hallelujah. Because when we give thanks and praise, it shows God that we are mindful 
of him and of his favor. We're talking about this is the year of favor. When we give him praise and thanks, it shows him that we are mindful of his favor. We, when we give him thanks and praise, we acknowledge him and who he is in our life, in my life. Come on. I can get up here and praise all day long, but that ain't got nothing to do with you. You need to be doing it. Amen? It shows that we are grateful to him. It shows that we are in agreement with what he has ordained for our lives, my life. And it shows God that we remember all he has done for us. Come on. It says, forget not, hallelujah, all his benefits. Somebody just shout, God, I remember everything that you've done for me. Hallelujah, as I give you praise. See, that's those places when you look back over your life and you begin to say, I remember when you healed me. Thank you, Jesus. I remember when you saved me. Thank you, Jesus. See, I'm not forgetting his benefits. I remember how you brought me out. Thank you, Jesus. I remember how you covered me from that car accident. Thank you, Jesus. I remember how when I was a kid, and I almost drowned, uh, and nobody came to my rescue, but somehow miraculously, come on, glory be your name. See, this is a testimony. Now I'm testifying. Hallelujah. I remember God. All of a sudden, I knew I was drowning, but I popped up out of the water. Hallelujah. And wasn't nobody else there. Nobody brung me up out of the water. It was the hand of God that brung me up out of the water. Hallelujah. I remember what you've done. Let me give you some anonyms of praise. Blame. So we're talking about the opposite of praise. Blame, silence, neglect, disregard, disrespect, dishonor. Hallelujah. So what I thought about this, the Bible says that in everything gives thanks and let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And if we don't and we remain silent, Hallelujah. If we let the rocks cry out for us, this could really expose, number one, that could it be that you blame God for whatever has happened, which is an insult to him. I'm talking about when you neglect to praise, when you keep your mouth closed, when you can't even muster up a hallelujah or a thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you stand in a place of spectating when everybody else is praising and worshiping, come on, examine your heart right now. Could it really be that you're blaming God? Could it be that you, have, that you are in a place of indifference with God? Could it say what level of importance he holds in your life? Could it be that if you won't open your mouth and give him praise or lift your heart in praise, you are in a state of discouragement. Could it be that there's a lack of appreciation for him? Could it be it, it exposes our failure to acknowledge him? See, when we don't praise God, basically what we're saying is, I'm not even going to acknowledge you. That's just like walking into to the house. I, I remember, uh, you know, people will say, don't walk in my house and don't speak. That's disrespectful. How dare we walk into the house of God and don't speak? It's disrespectful. You ain't even acknowledging the one who you, who you claim you come to see. If you come to my house and you come to see me, at least say, hey, how you doing? Say something. Don't come in here with your head down and then you want me to be, uh, what's wrong with you? No. Come on. Show some respect. Show some honor. It's respectful. It's honorable that when you go to somebody's house, you say, hey, how are you? Come on. We can no longer fail to acknowledge our God, especially in the house of God. Come on, I'm moving quickly. Benefits of praise. Hey, glory be your name, Jesus. <laughs> praise is a weapon. Praise, and this is, I believe that this is especially in this season for Rivers. If you may be on here and you're not a part of Rivers and you're watching, this is no slight, but I am I, I'm prophetically right now speaking to this house. Amen. But this is for everybody. Grab it by the spirit. 
Praise is a weapon. One of the things that I began to see, if you have been paying attention over the last maybe four to five weeks, there's been an emphasis on praise being a weapon through prayer, um, through intercessory prayer on Sunday. And so this is um, and what we would call corporate praise. Um, in our corporate praise gatherings, there's been such an emphasis on praise being a weapon. He's weaponized our praise, uh, 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 shouting unto the Lord with voices of triumph. There's been so much that has been released uh, about this place of praise as it relating to it being a, a weapon. It, it causes us to tread on the head of the enemy. It gives us the neck of our enemy. Come on, praise is a weapon. And praise must be our weapon of choice in this season because why there is power, hey, in praise. Second Corinthians 10 and 3, it says this, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We got to stop trying to fight battles in the flesh through carnality and all of these different things. Sometimes if somebody make you mad, you just, just, just break out in the praise. Come on, just break out with a hallelujah. Amen. We walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They're spiritual weapons, and they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Praise is spiritual, not it is a spiritual, not a physical dimension of fighting. And we have to learn this spiritual dimension of fighting and just the power that praise hold and that we use it as a weapon. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you got to get a high praise in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand in this season. Oh, God. And, and we can find this um, about it pulls down strongholds. Joshua 6 Verses 1 through 5, the strategy that God gave to Joshua was to praise, to pull down the stronghold, which was Jericho. Jericho was a fortified place. It was a place that was hard to penetrate. He didn't say, go in there with your swords. He gave them a strategy. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk around this, and then I want you to go up on the seventh time with a shout of praise. Hallelujah. And it pulled that stronghold down. Hallelujah. Praise releases the spirit of God in your midst. And that you can find in 2 Chronicles. And, and, and um, really go back and read that whole chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, starting at verse 1 all the way through. You'll find so many um, just powerful nuggets in there. So I'm only just releasing a few. Praise releases the spirit of God in your midst. As they began to praise uh, the, uh, one of the prophets that was there, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he began to give them the word of the Lord. So praise releases the spirit of God in your midst. It also set, sets ambushments. Uh, uh, when they were going there, their praise, it set ambushments for the enemies. They were up, they were going to be fighting against, uh, I believe it was Moab, Amnon, and uh, Mount Seir. Amen. This is Second Chronicles 20, verse number 22. Then praise confuses the enemies, uh, confuses your enemy. Second Chronicles 20, verse 23. Now, you know that your enemy is confused because they came to fight you, and all of a sudden, they're fighting each other, taking out and destroying each other. <laughs> you talking about a, a praise that confused your enemies? Hallelujah. How you come to fight me, but next y'all done band together. You all done put a plot and a plan together. We finna go down and we're finna take them out. And then next thing you know, because they followed the strategy of, of praise, now where they once was looking to destroy us, they're destroying each other. And listen to this. He says, stand still, hallelujah, and see the salvation of the Lord. They didn't have to do nothing else, hallelujah, but praise God. And their enemies were destroyed. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to read this one. I, I love this scripture, and I know for a fact that this scripture uh, works. Isaiah 61. I'm giving you what praise does and some benefits of praise. It says, to appoint unto them, 61 and 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, uh, the oil of joy for mourning. It says, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Come on. 
uh, our praise, it is a garment that covers us. Come on. See, a garment is something that you put on. And see, for many of us, we got to learn how to put praise on. But then it also, that word translates into envelop yourself. Come on. We got to get so caught up in praise, hallelujah, that it becomes a covering over us that the enemy can't penetrate. Come on. That it breaks the spirit of heaviness uh, that when we're feeling weak, come on, you got to begin to praise God. Uh, oh, God, we, we put on this garment of praise uh, so that we don't grow weary or faint. Uh, when you feel yourself get into a place of weariness, uh, when you feel yourself get into a place where you want to faint, uh, come on, just begin to cover yourself in praise. Uh, come on, begin to saturate your house. Uh, come on, you ought to have 24-7 praise going on. Some nights I go to bed, uh, I have the word flowing, or I may have a praise and worship team playing. Come on, I'm covering myself in praise. Hallelujah. That I don't grow weary, that I don't grow weak. This says it breaks the spirit of heaviness. What is the spirit of heaviness? It's when you feel weak. It's when you don't feel like you have no more strength. It's when things are looking dark. He said to give them the garment of praise. See, when things are looking dark and you can't see the end of a thing, you just got to praise your way through. Come on, that praise becomes that light that will take you on to the other side. Come on. And some more benefits in Acts 16 and 25. Suddenly it's happened when Paul and Silas, hey, they was in prison and they began to praise God and sing praises unto him. And it said, and suddenly, hallelujah, come on, all type it in the chat, shout in your house, and suddenly, hallelujah, my breakthrough comes when I begin to praise. When I'm trapped, when I'm in bondage or, or something tried, is trying to hold me, oh God, and I just begin to praise my God, there is a suddenly that will happen. Come on, when we praise God, God moves on our behalf. And come on, and then we know the next thing was there was an immediate release from bondage. Some things are just still hanging on because you, you failed to, to praise God in the midst of it. Come on, sometimes the only thing that's going to get you loose and free from that thing is a consistent praise. Genesis 37 and 26, it stops wicked activity. Genesis 49 and 8, this is when Jacob began to give the blessings unto his children, the 12 tribes, which Judah, it says that it gives us the neck of our enemies. Genesis 49 and 8. Come on, 1 Samuel 16 and 23. 1 Samuel 16 and 23. This is when Saul, uh, uh, when, when uh, God has sent the uh, uh, tormenting spirit. Upon Saul, he said, bring me a minstrel. He called for David, and David began to play, hallelujah, and it drove out the demonic spirit. It gave him rest, hallelujah, and the principle behind this is this. The principle is a demon cannot exist in that type of atmosphere. He just simply can't, cannot function. Come on, you just begin to play some praise and worship music. Come on, you just begin to, I'll tell anybody, I keep an atmosphere in my house. I try to keep that atmosphere, and anything that Try to come in to uh to to shift the atmosphere in my house. Come on, I put some praise music on in a minute. I begin to put some prayers flowing in a minute. You don't get to shift the atmosphere in my house. Hallelujah. It simply cannot function. It brings confusion to the enemy. And come on, and I said all that to say is that praise, it is a warfare strategy. If it was good enough for them in the word, it should definitely be good enough for us in this day and in this hour and in this season. Hey, hallelujah. Praise helps our building process. According to 2 Chronicles 14 and 7, it says, Therefore he said unto Judah, praise, let us build these cities. Come on, we need to build up some cities. Make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. Come on, there's the land is yet before us. Uh, we need to be rebuilding our cities. Come on, and praise will help us in this building process. Uh, because sometimes when you're building, building can be weary. Come on, building takes a lot of strength. Come on, because you know you need that plowing anointing. You need the anointing of an ox. Uh, you'll be having to break up some follow ground. Uh, come on, when you're building, sometimes building takes years to build and lay the foundation come on but praise will help you in your building process that you don't get weary of building 
Come on, just when you you ready to throw in a towel, Lord, I've been doing this for 10 years and I don't see a thing. Shout hallelujah. I thank you that you've given me a grace to continue building. It will help your building process. As we praise, things are being established. Don't ever forget that. As you praise, things are being established. Build To build means to establish, to make some things, to make it become permanent. There's some things that with your praise is becoming permanent in the spirit realm. Praise occupies that territory in the spirit realm. Amen? And then I'm going to close with this. I have a few minutes left. I'm going to give you some expressions of praise. And this is not limited to, uh, this is not inclusive of all, but these are just the ones that I want to give you. And then if, if you're a part of Rivers and you have the prayer strategy, there's a whole slew of them. And I just want to encourage you, go back and, and go over these expressions so that sometimes uh, I remember when, um, in the old days, uh, the church that I was a part of, our family church, and I always, I never understood this, but the preacher would say, Praise the Lord. And people will say, praise the Lord. Nobody would praise him. It's like, okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, praise him. But see, sometimes we don't praise him because we don't have an accurate expression on how to praise him. So then I, as I begin to grow, uh, I came in contact with a pastor who told me that. He said, listen, when we say praise the Lord, don't shout back praise the Lord. Uh, go ahead and praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, if you ever hear somebody say praise the Lord, don't say praise the Lord back. You begin to praise him. You be the expression in the middle of the service. Uh, if don't nobody else lift up their hands, if don't nobody else shout hallelujah while everybody else is saying praise the Lord back, come on, you just go ahead and do what you were born to do. Come on, you go ahead and give him some glory. Come on, expression of praise, Barak. It means to kneel. Um, by implication, it means to bless God as an act of adoration. And uh, it is acknowledging his kingship by the kneeling. It blesses God when we acknowledge his authority. Some examples of a Barak praise is bowing, kneeling, laying prostrate, using our body to give God forms of worship. So you be wondering why you see people, uh, they kneel down when they're worshiping and they're praying. They are Baracking. They're, that's the expression that they want to give. They recognize his authority, and so they want to bow. Or we lay ourselves prostrate. Toda, it is thanksgiving, adoration, and confession. Make confessions with the mouth showing forth adoration, thanking God for his attributes. Adoration is a fine speaking. Um, it is elegance of language. It is commendation. It is also the term that we use, um, and oftentimes we only do this eulogy, when we eulogize people at their death. Don't wait. Come on, stop doing that. Don't wait to eulogize them to speak well of them then. Look, if you you speak well of me now, don't wait till I'm gone and can't hear it. That's a side note. That is reverentially, adoration, religiously, benediction, and even with Jesus. Don't wait till the end of your life. Now you want to praise him. Come on, give him some praise now. Hallelujah. And an example of that is speak well of God, you are so good. You're awesome. There's none like you. You are great. That is fine speaking towards him. Thanksgiving, in a sense of rejoicing. Thanksgiving is a celebration of thanksgiving. And back in the um, Old Testament, it was thanksgiving, giving for the harvest, being grateful, acknowledgement of benefits or favor. And so one of the things that I will say is it, it could be this. You are strong and your strength produces deliverance. So now I want to say thank you. Your goodness produces favor in my life. Now I want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your awesomeness. Thank you for your power. Confession means to acknowledge. Oh, glory be your name. We acknowledge your goodness, God. I'm just giving you some examples of what to do. So when you come into a corporate praise or even when you're at home, you may not know how to praise God because I understand when I first got said, I didn't know how to praise God. So that's probably why when they said praise the Lord, I just said praise the Lord because I didn't know all of this stuff. I don't take it for granted. Maybe you do know this, but I'm just giving you some examples. Amen. We acknowledge your goodness. We acknowledge your power. We stand in awe of your greatness. That is confession and acknowledgement unto God in the form of a todah praise. Tehillah, it is laudation, celebration. That's when we boast, we sing, 
sing of halals. It is a spontaneous praise, which is often unrehearsed or unscripted or personally released as a response to God. Examples, to applaud, to clap our hands, to extol, to glorify, to magnify, to esteem. Come on, this is what we do um, prophetically, spontaneously. When we sing a new song unto God, it is a spontaneous flow that gives glory to God, inspired by Holy Spirit. And then we have a zamar. And so this is what we would consider the striking the instruments which make music accompanied by voices which is celebrating God. And so that's that place of um, uh, if you play any type of instrument or the keyboard or horn, violin, all of those different things, it would be considered a zamar praise. And it's an example. The minstrels use their instruments to glorify God. And I'm the... Um, uh, uh, evangelist Linda always say that, come on, minstrels, stir the atmosphere, stir the atmosphere. I love it when she say that. Come on, because she understand what Zamar is and how much power uh, instruments can do to create an atmosphere. Um, halal. This is that which we, the root word where we get hallelujah comes from. It means to celebrate, to honor, to extol, to make mention of, to rave. And we also know it is considered the highest form of praise. The example is a place where you can't quit talking about God. You're just boasting about him. And I mean, you could just go on and on. You having a conversation with somebody and you just can't stop talking about how good God is. And he did this. And you know what? Yesterday, God said, I, I mean, you're just going on and on. And one of the things that I thought about, well, I'll save that. And just give me, I got two more. Shabbat, which is shout. Make a loud noise that's making a striking blow against the adversary. It is when your voice becomes an instrument used to split the ears of the enemy. Our voices become a weapon against the adversary. And we talked about this. Praise is a weapon. It is a warfare style. It also can be those places of declaration and decrees of victory. We know that is prophetess Wanda all day. Amen. Uh, she will shabak the Lord at any time. And then last but not least, it is the yada, and that is that place of an extension of our hands in reverence and thanks unto God. It also is an act of surrender, yielding to the spirit of God. And so if you're ever in a service and people say, come on, put your hands up, don't, don't not put your hands up. Corporately, put your hands up because they understand that the spirit of God is moving, and we lift our hands in a place of surrender and submitting. God, whatever you want to do in this service, come on, we, we yield. Come on, we stop everything else, and we just lift our hands. So a lot of times we hear phrases and we're hearing things. So I hope that what we've talked about on tonight gives you a better insight into why we do what we do, especially as a praise and worship leader, um, overseer. You know, when we're giving commands, or I hate to use the word commands, but it is when we're saying do this or do this or open up your mouth or this, it's because we understand the power, how much power it is when we praise and when we honor him. When we say lift your hands, come on, that means, okay, we've sensed the spirit has just shifted or something is happening. God wants to do something. Come Come on, if we begin to uh, kneel in the middle of a service, that's because we understand his kingship and authority that just came in. And so I'm going to leave you with this. Last but not least, when we praise God in the right way, it makes God appealing to others. Your praise, my praise to an unbeliever that may not know him. If I continually praise God in the midst of what I'm going through or somebody in my family be like, man, you're going through this, but you still praise God. Okay, I want to know that something about this God that she that she yet got a say she yet got a praise on her lips. Yes, I still got a praise on my lips. Oh, I will praise him with the fruit of my lips. Amen. And so I pray that you were blessed on tonight um, by this word. Remember, it is the power of kingdom praise. I pray that you were blessed. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Amen.